something you want to make sure you do. You would think, when you looked at this thing at first, and I made this mistake the first time I put it together, and this was one reason I wanted to do it in order new, uh, the throttle assembly right here, this essentially works a governor. The governor, what it does is it, it uh, allows for a certain amount of fuel input to be put through the fuel pump. But you have, this is your throttle on this thing, and the throttle governor. So there is a, right here is a 10 millimeter nut. On the back side, inside here, right there where the pin is, that is an eight millimeter end of a little bolt. So when I first took it apart, I was able to get it apart and then I had this dangly bolt inside. Um, oh, another thing that I forgot to mention earlier, whenever I did remove the tank, there was a big chunk of the packaging from the styrofoam that was stuck in here by the uh, governor. And there's a pretty good chance <laughs> that this would not work properly. Uh, it was it was really wedged up and there's about an inch by inch wedged up under there. Another perfect example why you really need to take these things apart and uh, double double check these. Um, so let's go ahead and take off this uh, throttle assembly. Now that's a, a eight millimeter on the inside and you need a 10 millimeter on the outside. The box end should work real well or at least mine, you know, some, some wrenches or the, the box end is going to be too, a uh, little too thick to reach, but on my particular wrench, it works pretty good. And I'm just going to use my finger, roll that out. Okay. Have that nut off. Okay. You can take this thing out now. Those springs, I'll get it a little bit closer and show you how they attach. And make sure you make notes. Mine, my particular engine is in hole number one, right here with the spring. So you want to, uh, when you reassemble them, make a note of that so you know your spring goes back in the same hole. One thing you want to watch for when you do these springs, and they go in and through the little holes. You can see there's a little hole right there. You just kind of rock them, pivot them out. Uh, Always pay attention to which side your actual coiled end is. A lot of times you'll have the coiled end here, then you'll have the long piece here. Make sure you get those oriented the way it came apart. I make notes on my bag uh, that the uh, coil side goes to the actual throttle. Now we got an air shroud. It also is an eight millimeter. Uh, it's the uh, pump side air shroud. So let's bring it over here. Carefully rotate this dude over. So you can see what I'm doing. Now that bottom shroud, you got to be careful with that thing if you're rotating this thing around. Um, kind of orienting this so you can see what I'm doing. I did go ahead and write pump side on this thing. And then that way it's just a, even that much more of an identifier. And there's two screws in this thing. Uh, on shrouds like this, you always want to make sure that you, you pay attention to how they go on in relationship to your covers. These things are actually really, really important. What it does is it forces the air through your shroud and around your cylinder to cool your cylinder around the fins. Uh, sometimes people will get carried away and they'll bend these things and jack up the airflow. And, and it can make a difference on how these things cool. And I say these things to any air-cooled engine. Injector side, air shroud. That one also is an eight millimeter and it just has one left over here on the side. The other fastener was uh, in, the main in the main cover, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the uh, main fan shroud. And I did go ahead and put an arrow on here just to make it a real quick indicator which way's up. I have had some pretty extensive machines part in this shop in the past. Uh, it is just so good of a, a habit to get into to doing these bags. I've, I've had some pieces where I've went into uh, Goldwing motorcycles where I've torn the engines completely apart, transmissions completely apart, and you know, I've had 300 bags, 200 bags, but it really, really makes the, the reassembly process so much more enjoyable. Um, 
Okay, now we have the rocker retainer. Something else I did, uh, I did check, this thing should have roughly the, the uh, valve clearance, and we'll go over that whenever I do the reassembly, I'm gonna go into actual valve specs. Uh, <clears throat> but it should be roughly seven thousandths. Um, and this thing, the intake side was at 11, uh, 11 thousandths, and the exhaust side was at, I believe it was four. So yeah, it was at four, looking at my notes. So that shows you how inaccurate these things are. So when I put it back together, I'm gonna to put both of them at seven so it can operate correctly. That's a uh, 12 millimeter that holds that together. Holds that on. Again, I, it, that was actually a pretty tight bolt. Um, but I've already got it loosed, make it a little easier. There is, when you pull this uh, rocker, your rocker assembly off, uh, there is a pin down in here, a locator pin. Uh, it, on mine, it appears to be fastened enough it's not gonna fall out. You know, that's not a guarantee, but it seems to be pressed into the head. Well, that thing's pretty nasty. Okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do, this, this is a, anytime you take an engine apart, no matter what brand, it, it really does not matter. Um, I always will take a piece of tape. These are push rods are coming out next. I take a couple pieces of tape. You always want to orient your push rods. Uh, let me get a paper towel. Stepping out of view for just a second. Get a paper towel and some brake cleaner. The reason you want to do that, I'm taking the inside, the uh, intake side out, just pull it straight up. I take a little bit of brake cleaner, rub it off. Make sure you know and keep oriented which way was up. If an engine has ran in, these things do bed in to the lifter side and also to your uh, rocker side. So you take the permanent marker, then I just write rocker, intake. Peel the tape off, throw the dude back on, clean it, and throw it back on. All right, head bolts, that was another one. When I took this thing apart, you have four head bolts. One, two, three, four. Um, one of them was at like 55 pounds. Uh, the other one, I think I stopped at almost 65. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going any further. I know this is a diesel, uh, but also know the thread size of these. And if I'd have kept, I was afraid if I kept trying to see how tight that was, that I was gonna wind up stripping the threads out of this head. So it was definitely not where it should have been. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use my impact. I probably don't, probably don't have to now because I have it uh, already loosened off. This is something else you wanna do. When you're taking these uh, a head apart, uh, or any, fa any multi-fastener item, especially one that is critical, uh, a, a head gasket surface is always a critical surface. Um, and I'm gonna say that this back plate will also be very critical and you look at how many bolts are on this thing, you don't want to just automatically go right to town and loosen that thing off right from the get-go. You want to do it, you want to loosen in a crisscross pattern just like you would tighten. So I would just barely. Now this actually, when I took it apart, it actually ratcheted. So just do it in a crisscross pattern. Once they're all completely loose, you can go ahead and drive them out. I normally like to, if I can, some, some heads won't allow you to do it, this one does. I like to go ahead and loosen all of them off uh, before I uh, start taking any of them out. These things also have, you have your bolt, flat washer. Be very careful not to drop these things. Uh, but uh, there is a whole, 
that where your injector is, it should be large enough. It's not going to fall in, but it's just you want to be careful. Don't accidentally get something in the bottom of your engine. And these are uh, steel washers. They're not copper. Some engines will have a copper washer. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the head. Nice and easy. It does pull just straight out. Now, uh, I did actually clean the piston earlier. Uh, it was carboned up uh, about like the base of the head. One thing you wanna watch for, this head does have alignment dowel pins. They go left like this. So make sure that you don't lose those alignment dowel pins. It makes for a bad day when you do. The, the head gasket on this thing, it's just a nice flat gasket. And I like actually I like these because there is no harm in reusing these things. And this something else I noticed that was pretty cool. Uh, the and we'll go over this when I do the reinstall uh, or when I start putting it back together. This thing does have right here. It has uh, the uh, angles imprinted on the flywheel. There is a notch, I have an arrow on it right there, and there is, it is definitely an impressed notch, a notch in the case. And what this is, is you have top dead center, verified it after I took it apart, and these are going to be timing marks for your fuel injector pump. Um, something else, which I'll show a picture of right when I took it apart, and we just, me and buddy, we cleaned the surface, and when I first looked inside, we actually found a couple little slivers of metal inside the alu uh, aluminum, they were non-ferrous. Uh, inside in between the piston and the uh, cylinder. The inside of the cylinder actually doesn't look too bad. Um, it, it's gonna be something, again, I'm taking it completely apart anyway. I'm gonna measure the inside of the cylinder. I'm gonna measure the piston. Uh, see if there's any other things we need to retrofit at a later date. Now we're ready for the flywheel. You do have to be careful with this shroud because it's still held on with that uh, screw. We, that screw does not come out until we can get that flywheel out. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the flywheel. This cup right here, this is your starter cup. It's actually a pretty thick piece of material. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I put a 19 millimeter socket on there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my impact wrench. A while ago, whenever I was checking the torque on that thing, uh, it was at 75 pounds is what that thing, now I'm not 100% sure that's what I'm going back with. Uh, uh, what this is, is this, this happens to be a Motion Pro uh, tire iron, fits in there pretty good. So we'll see if we can back this thing off pretty easy. I just want to, it really it came off pretty easy. Uh, I just wanted to keep my uh, engine from turning. I don't like a free spinning engine when I'm taking stuff apart. Okay, uh, serrated Loctite nut, no washer in there. And there are, if you look inside, it's got three underneath the cup. You got three separate pins. All right, they lock in, okay. You have these pins on the back of your fan shroud. And then you've got, that's where those go. And then uh, we're gonna have to figure out, we're gonna see how we need to pull this thing off. So the cup will only go on one way. That's good, I like that. Now I'm having to ride right on bags. I didn't get this far before. Here's the flywheel. Got the uh, fins off. 
or the cooling fans off or the cooling fan uh, took it off. You know, this, this thing's gonna be on pretty tight. So that's when it's time to get your uh, gear puller out. Anytime you use a gear puller, this one here has a, uh, a centering point and the shaft, most shafts will also have a centering point uh, right inside there, right in the end of the shaft. I usually put, make sure you put a little bit of grease on there. That way you don't hold the end of the shaft or at least you really, really reduce your risk. Uh, you just put your gear, start, gear puller on here. Depending on the quality of puller, uh, this is a, a little bit older puller here and it's actually a fairly well built puller the the better pullers don't make me nervous about using the impact on so but do all this stuff at your own risk starting to get just a little bit of tension okay i'm gonna go ahead and pop this thing up so i can see what i'm doing a little better make sure that it appears to be pretty centered on the flywheel i usually tighten it down pretty tight Bump those, see if there's anything loose going any direction. Make sure it's well centered. And we're gonna find out how tight it is. Let me get it on my... I do little bitty hits at a time. And sometimes I'll even take, depending on how much stress I wind up under, you get a little bit of stress on this. There she goes, pops right off. One thing I wanna warn you, a lot of people, and I've done it too, I've done it in the past. Uh, you know, some people will get a couple, couple of people over here and they'll pry, put a lot of pressure on here, thread the nut, hit it with a hammer. I've removed flywheels that way, but it is definitely much safer, safer to use the appropriate tool. It is just a typical taper shaft. Got what appears to be a half moon key right there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this shroud. It's already, uh, this uh, shroud is already unbolted because remember that was the back side of that's where the nut was uh, for the uh, throttle assembly. Okay, now let's take the uh, back cover off this thing. Uh, it is a, you're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket. Old socket here is pretty stiff. You're gonna need a 14 millimeter socket, um, and you want to crisscross uh, something uh, uh, that I really noticed before. Whenever I was checking the torque specs on these things, I checked like three of them. Uh, they were all so far off from each other. The gasket's really compressed uh, right here. This gasket was compressed almost metal to metal. Back over here by the, the uh, fuel pump. There was almost no compression. They were super loose. So again, we're gonna take them all apart, put them back together equally when we do so. Um, I'm gonna crisscross this thing. That one may have been one of the ones I loosened up earlier. Okay, they're all loose now, so I'm gonna go and pull them out. I'm not taking them all the way out because I want to see if they're all the same length before I start taking everything out uh, of the uh, actual tape itself. I usually try to leave a thread or two. Okay, of course accidents happen, but I usually try to leave a couple of threads. That way, in aluminum, if you get going too fast, you can actually spin the aluminum out. Okay. So far, they're all the same length, which is actually what I would expect. All right, have all of them out. 
Now we're going to try to uh, go ahead and pull this case apart. Uh, there are something I do notice. It's interesting. Some of the things they do on these engines are pretty good, uh, and sometimes they're not. But there there are some prying surfaces. You have a couple ears here, and then usually this one here is more of a tapping surface. You just real like tap, tap on these things, but I'm going to start easily prying on these corners. Um, I like using the same tire iron that I used a while ago on the spring cup because it's got just a little bit of a lever to it and you can just kind of sneak up on stuff pretty good. Okay. This thing's coming up pretty easy. Actually a little easier than I expected. I try not to go in between the case if I can help it because I don't want to damage the uh, gasket surface. So I'm just going to kind of keep rocking this around and there she comes. That actually just no issues at all. Make sure I'm not pulling the gasket apart. All right, here we go. There's your cover. And your governor assembly. And just like some of the uh, pictures that I've seen uh, from other guys taking these things apart or other people taking these things apart, there is definitely a... Uh, significant nasty look to the oil. 